He did go to different places in Sindh, like once I remember, and we had to go with him. He was posted to once to Sakhar, once to Nawabsha, once to Sakh, uh, to Shikarpur, so, which is, these are three places in Upper Sindh. And so we went with them, with him wherever he went, and uh, saw a bit of that. Um, but basically, uh, our family was from Hyderabad, Sindh, and but because he was so keen on our education, and in those days the schools in Hyderabad were not too good, so uh, we we stayed in Karachi with my mother while he stayed wherever his workstation was. My older three brothers and sisters, two sisters and one brother, they went to a Sindhi school to start off with, whereas the, us younger three, we have there's six of us in the family, the younger three was sent straight to a convent uh, to study, so that's why English is very much my own language in a way. My mother came and took up a house, rented a house in Karachi, so we were all there in the beginning. Um, so um, we used to go to school as day scholars. I used to go on a bicycle, and we all went on bicycles. Life was very different in Karachi in those days, much more liberal than it is now, in fact. and. Um, it, it was a convent, but it was a very mixed uh, population there. I mean, Karachi was fairly cosmopolitan. There were, it wasn't sort of uh, one kind of community there. There were a lot of Parsis and Christians, and one never bothered about religion. Uh, so, you know, partition came as a bit of a surprise to us. In 1946, um, well, I remember at that point, I think it was 45 or 46, when you know the political movement was very active, the, the independence struggle became very, very strong and everybody was out in the streets shouting slogans and so on. I remember hearing these slogans, uh, what? Larke rahenge Pakistan, Larke rahenge Pakistan. Uh, Marke rahenge Pakistan, which we didn't understand, I must say, that what was to come, you know, it, was, it just seemed like a very rhythmic slogan then. And um, in those days, of course, every, I suppose uh, most of the Muslims supported the Muslim League. But it was interesting that um, in my mother's family, they were quite um, against the establishment. My aunt, one of my aunts decided, and she was more or less pushed into it by her family as well, her sisters and brothers, that you must contest and so on. So she'd applied for a Muslim League ticket, but it wasn't given to her. Instead, it was given to an Ahani woman and because Jinnah was very friendly with that family. And so my aunt decided to contest against her, uh, against the Muslim League, which was, um, in retrospect, a very foolhardy decision to take because, you know, the whole spirit was for the, in favor of the Muslim League. There was, they were supported by so many. But nevertheless, uh, she felt brave enough to do it. And of course she lost, and that was to be expected. But I remember she also asked me to be on the, uh, you know, when you're, uh, to be her agent, I think, in the room when they're casting their votes. And I was very young, I think I must have been 10 years old or something like that. And um, so I could see that there weren't, you know, 10 women would come all at the same time and didn't know what they were doing. But I was too nervous to say anything to them. And so then afterwards, people got very angry with me because I hadn't said anything that they were cheating or forging their votes with. I learned hard. But suddenly, you know, there was 14th of August or 13th of August and we went to school. And then there were two days of holiday because 14th was Indian National Independence Day and 15th was Pakistan's Independence Day. So those two, or, or maybe for a week, a school school may have been closed, I'm not sure. Then I went on the next day after school opened, after the 15th. It was a strange sight because the school was almost empty. There were about, you know, about 10 or 12 students. Because all the Hindus suddenly were not there. And, you know, there was nothing uh, that we'd noticed, you know, like in other places in India or Pakistan, the violence. There, there was not that kind of violence, but there, there must have been obviously threats. Then I remember we went to the railway station, we were living very near there, and I used to see these families, the Hindu families, with all their tins and packages and whatnot wrapped up, sitting on the 
railway station waiting for their train to come. So up till then, it seems to me, at least, I don't know, because as a child one doesn't know the exact thing, uh, that they were leaving. Hmm. And, but you couldn't see that you know, there had been any signs of violence, like injuries and so on, one didn't, at least from what I remember. But then there were, you know, these are just, um, I mean, memories that I have, that as we were going in the train, we were there, the six of us children, and my sister and brother were a bit older than us, and, but there was another family sitting in a corner, sort of looking very scared. And I remember it all after, even after all these years. And for some reason, we said, um, go to your country. Go to your own country. You know. You said that? Yeah, I think as, as children, we said it. And, and, uh, and then my oldest sister told us to shut up, that we shouldn't talk like that, and why are we saying that? So she was conscious enough to stop us. But uh, later on, I've just been wondering, where did I get it from? Because our family was, was not like that, you know, we never had this feeling about uh, communal feeling. But here we were telling them, you know, and why did we think that this was not their country? So uh, whatever, you know, wherever I got the message from, I don't know, but this must have been a feeling amongst other people must have grown too. Anyway, as I was saying that when these people came in the trains, then there were a lot of women who were injured and, you know, mentally upset and so on. And so my grandmother, who was a very um, courageous and innovative person, and she, during her stay in Turkey or wherever else, she had um, taken a course in midwifery. So she knew a bit about, you know, delivering babies and first aid and so on. So what she did was she found an empty house. So she just walked in and she said, look, there are a lot of rooms here. Let's convert it into a shelter and a hospital for these people. So every time the train loads would come and the train would arrive, some of us would be sent there, the older people would be sent there to see who needed help and the women would be brought to this hospital. And then she recruited all of us, including me. Uh, I was about 11, I suppose, at that point, um, to come and help out in the hospital. So, you know, like making beds, this, that, and the other, or helping them with their food and things. Yeah, I remember a woman who had, was wearing all in red clothes and so on, and she had a big gash here. And she just got married and she was gone for the marriage ceremony or something. And she, they'd been attacked and so, and they'd got into the train, her husband had been killed. Her bridegroom, in fact, had been killed. And she, she came, had come with her parents. So because she had this wound, she was kept in the hospital. And she used to, you know, was also mentally very upset. She would cry at night and so on. So we spent some seven months doing this work. After school, I would go there. I joined college in Hyderabad, and um, it wasn't college wasn't very nice. I must say, first of all, I was studying science. It was a pretty difficult subject, and um, there's all this segregation between the men and women, it's the students, and the boys who were there. They don't come from the villages, and they didn't know how to behave with girls, and they used to behave badly. So it was all these girls grouped together in one corner kind of thing. And the teachers also didn't see what was wrong with that. Um, so like, you know, if I'd go up to study in the library and I'd find these eyes sort of staring at me. Uh, so that was not very comfortable. And then after a few years, I went away to study in the States. Then, and of course, with so much political activity here mm. in the 60s, we were getting quite involved in that. Yeah. I was involved, um, a, a group of us, including my husband, myself, and a friend, Rahman Subhan, and two or three other people. We were sort of, um, had applied for permission to bring out a political weekly. And so we got permission to do this in 67. And so I was busy running with that. I was the editor, Rahman Subhan was the executive editor, and Kamal was a publisher. So we were busy, it was a weekly. And so we were quite busy with that. And then of course, with all this excitement of the elections and everything else, the politics was sort of bubbling over all the time. So we quite an interesting, exciting time, but also a 
scary time. I think it's um, 47 in a way was different because um, it was more like uh, like the violence that took place, if you're referring to the communities going for each other and the majority community, whichever it was, going for the other because the minority. And I think a lot of it obviously stirred up politically people, you know, because I mean, I don't think hatred comes naturally to people, neighbors and so on. But as a member of the majority community, personally, as I said in earlier, that you sense the differences, different people, but you didn't actually live in an environment of fear, like, you know, wondering who's going to knock on your door in the middle of the night, who's going to take your daughter away, who's going to, you know, kill your father or rape somebody. You know, if you're not a minority community, then it, that doesn't uh, happen to you. So I just felt this, saw this changes, you know, empty houses. But that also makes you feel, you know, what's going wrong, you know, because suddenly houses are empty, the doors are open, you can just walk in, everything has been left behind. Or you see these different kind of faces, faces you're not used to. Or you see a school which has been full of students and suddenly it's emptied out. And yet a week later again it starts filling up, but with different people. So those are my impressions uh, of 47.